Welcome back to the Piney Woods Homestead, y'all. Today, we're gonna to talk about how not to get scammed when buying firewood. I'm gonna take you around to feed up some animals too, guys. Thanks for stopping in at the Piney Woods Homestead. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you have, as always, guys, we appreciate you. Y'all had to actually make me some notes so I wouldn't forget what I was talking about here. Load size, that's what we're gonna talk about first. <clears throat> we have discovered this year when people call us to deliver firewood, they say, what size truck are you bringing it on? Because in the past they have been, according to what we have been told, kind of scammed by load size. The way that we sell firewood is by the face cord, which is one third of a full cord, up to a full cord, which we can haul on the seven by 12 dump trailer. We can haul a cord, no problem, a little bit more than that really, but we load everything out from our individual bunks where we split and stack so that we know we're giving a cord out to the customer if that's what they order or a face cord, what have you. So know what you're getting as far as the load size. If somebody says, oh, it's just a um, full size pickup truck and I'm bringing you a cord. No, they're not. You can't fit a cord of firewood on a standard full-size pickup truck. You just can't do it, y'all. It will not hold it. You can probably in a eight foot bed, a standard eight foot bed, which not many people have anymore, get probably more than a face cord stacked in there, but you're not gonna be able to get a full cord stacked in there or even thrown loosely, y'all, as you've seen us put firewood in here loosely when we load it into the loader bucket by hand and put it into the dump trailer. So load size, ask the person, are you gonna bring me a true face cord, a true cord, what are you bringing me? So that you'll know and you can decide if you want to shop with that person or not. A good rule of thumb is to stick with standard measurements, face cord up to a cord. And if you don't know what that is, a cord is four foot wide, four foot tall, eight feet long. We split them in 16 inch average lengths and you'll have three faces of that to equal a cord. Hope that makes sense. All right, next up we have split size and I don't just mean the length of it. We split ours an average 16 inch length because that's what most folks' modern stoves are accepting. Folks that have outdoor wood boilers, which are few and far between in our neck of the woods, we're just not in the climate like folks up north for folks to really have that. Some do, but they can put much longer splits inside of their wood boilers. But most people heating their homes around here are like us. They have a wood stove, it's generally a newer wood stove with a reburn system in it and it's gonna take really up to a 20 some inch split, but 16 inch splits work better because there's more airflow around that split for it to be able to combust and burn the way that it should instead of sitting there and smolder y'all. But not just length, but girth. Girth on this thing, how big is it? Is it so big of a split that you feel like you're at the gym doing curls or is it something you can manage? Something that your grandmother could manage? That's how we split everything here, y'all. Just because a lot of our customers are elderly and it's easier for them to pick that wood up and take it in the house to put it in their wood stove. Safer for them too. And I like it better myself because it's easier to get a fire started. And as long as you are burning good wood, your fire's gonna burn at the temp you need it to to keep all that creosote from forming as bad. But y'all, I bring this up because just from trial and error, not trial and error, from experience this year on us delivering firewood, people have been very happy with this size split. And they've told us in the past when they ask somebody how big are the splits, they'll say, oh, they're not too big. But when they get there, they end up taking an ax and having to split a lot of the wood again. So 
ask them, is it something that your grandmother could handle easily or am I gonna have to resplit this stuff? All right, we're gonna go down and get to hogs fed and those piglets and we're gonna talk more about how not to get scammed when buying firewood while we're feeding up. It's Matthew here at the Piney Woods Homestead, guys. If you have tried our Piney Woodsman Beard Balm, you're going to be thrilled over this. We've come up with a new flavor, as we call them around here, guys. Deer stand, that's what it's called. It's gonna remind you of deer hunting in the fall. The smell of fresh, fresh leaves falling, the smell of fresh dirt being turned over, the smell of that crisp morning air as you're climbing up into the deer stand, freezing your tail off. Guys, you're gonna love Deer Stand from Piney Woodsman. All right. This is where I have to be quick. Not gonna work. No. There we go. It's like a cat and mouse game. Because it's not gonna put your head in there. There we go. And they argue over the pan. And they could eat it right off the ground, as dry as it is, but we like to put it in the paint. I said we will keep talking about firewood. Another thing is wood type. Ask the person what they're bringing you. We advertise mixed hardwoods. And the reason we do that is because I clear small lots and projects for folks throughout the year. And we bring it back, put it on a log deck and let it season. And we sort our logs by species for the most part. All of our oaks and hickories will go on one log deck. All of our poplars, maples, anything that is not as hard and stringy of a wood goes on the other. And any pine that we do, because we do split pine for campfire wood and fire pits, because people love it, it burns good. We keep that on a separate deck, so we're not mixing that in, but ask the person, what type of wood are you bringing me? Don't expect that they're just going to bring you oak because you've got it in your mind that oak is the best firewood or hickory. Know what you're buying so that you're not disappointed when it gets there. But what I'm getting at with that is go out into the woods and take a look at the trees. Educate yourself on the different types of oaks that are in your area the different types of maples and different conifers. That way when you are getting that wood to be delivered, I always suggest to people that we sell to, I, I make folks inspect the wood before I ever unload so that they're gonna be satisfied with it before I ever lift up that dump trailer. So educate yourself on the different types of wood in your area so that you'll know what you're buying and you can recognize it when it's being delivered. That way you're not scammed and you end up buying a bunch of stuff that you didn't want. These pigs, y'all, if you've never raised pigs before, it's about like having... Puppies. Puppies. They're about like pets. That's the thing though, when they get bigger, they can knock you down and hurt you. But they know it's feeding time. And they're looking good. We got one that ended up being a runt. But that's all right. They're good pigs. Doing good with the feeder too. Here in a few days, we'll probably put a little more feed in here. One other thing to avoid being scammed when it comes to firewood, y'all. You can hear me over the lid slapping. <laughs> Ow! They're, they're biters. Yeah. Um. If somebody tells you, I'm gonna try. Here. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you better fast. Focus. They found the buckles on my leg. They're boot biters, y'all. Come here. If sit here, I'll throw that, throw that down, and maybe they'll go for it. No. No. <laughs> here, you'll be taking the camera. Yeah. All right. Okay. While well, Lisa by... is being ate up by these critters. If somebody tells you, I'm going to send you, a, uh, do you have Cash App or one of these things that is kind of crazy? Most of the time, firewood 
you're going to pay for it when it shows up. If they say you need to prepay before they bring it, call somebody else, y'all, because a lot of times that can be somebody trying to scam you, not only out of the cost of whatever the wood is that you think you're buying, but now they've got your information and can do all kinds of damage to your bank account. So do not prepay for firewood. Pay for it when it's delivered, when you meet the person there, after you've inspected it and decided this is good. This is the one right here that peed on me the other day. I was petting his belly. Y'all, we like to keep them gentle, as gentle as we can, because we do all the work here, y'all, as far as feeding them, taking care of them, processing. So you want your pigs to be gentle. That's why we try to put hands on them. We don't try, we put hands on them twice a day. And sometimes we just come down to put hands on them anyways. Good gracious, Sarah, that is muscle. <laughs> Good pigs. Barbecue pig right here. Don't tell him that. He doesn't know. But he's going to live a good life until it's time to go on the barbecue pit. And we'll show you that this year. Traditionally, cooking it on the ground. He's only going to have one bad day in his life. That's it. It'll give us a bunch of good days, good meals. All right, back up to the wood yard. All right, we're going to hit on two final things about how not to get scammed on firewood. And probably the most important thing is moisture content. When you ask the person that's going to be bringing you firewood, is it good to burn? And they're going to say, oh, it's ready to burn. I burn it in my house all the time. Well, that's great. But what's the moisture content? I keep just a cheap moisture meter, y'all. It doesn't have to be a, a high dollar moisture meter like you use for grade lumber. This is Harbor Freight. I think it was about 10 bucks. And it's lasted now. I've had it for a couple of years. But it's consistent. This is showing me, and if you can see that, 11% is what we're reading there. On the center, 15. Because wood dries from the ends quicker, guys. So if you'll check it on the face of it, it's really going to give you a more accurate. Well, now we're at 14. That's perfect for burning in these new modern wood stoves, guys. Older stoves that don't have the reburn technology, they can handle wood that is, I'm not going to say green, but is not as dry as this. And everything that we split, whether it was split 10 months ago or has been decked up, drying out, once it's split, even if it's from a log form, we have found that within a few weeks, the moisture content's down there around that 15%. And even when I buck logs, a lot of times I'll check them just to see where it's at. And most of the logs when we buck are around 15 to 20% already. So it works out pretty good because anything that's really big, we save that for the next year. It'll go on next year's wood pile. So moisture content, guys, don't be fooled by buying green wood. Just because somebody says, oh yeah, it burns in my house. Just verify, y'all. Trust and verify with a moisture meter. Pick up a $10 moisture meter so that you can check it yourself. Just pull some wood out of the back of the dump bed or the back of the truck, whatever, however you're buying it at random and check it. So that's a good tip for you. And the final tip would be premium. You're going to see a lot of people advertising premium firewood and we do as well but let me show you what's premium and what's not premium all right in my hands i have a piece of hickory with the bark on and i have a piece of red oak center cut with no bark this is what we call premium we reserve this for people that want to barbecue pigs cook briskets, things like that. There's no bark. I like the no bark for barbecuing because you just seem to get a cleaner smoke. So that is a premium firewood. It's got a low moisture content. It's uniform 
shape and size which makes it great for using on a cooker and some people want to burn this in their home because it's less mess so that's another thing that makes it premium this hickory on the other hand is not going to be center cut because you've got the bark on it you've got some sap wood that is not premium firewood so if somebody tells you that's premium they really don't know what premium is guys what was that old song um axel rose sang bed of roses is that right guns and roses bed of roses is that who sang that song no. lay me down in a bed of roses oh yeah is that who that was well this is a bed of lettuce <laughs> <laughs> guys thanks for hanging out with us at the piney woods homestead as we went over some tips for you if you're burning wood to either barbecue with or heat your home with how not to get scammed guys because it's really easy a lot of unscrupulous people out there and we're just hoping that wherever you live at that you get a good delivery a good experience with firewood yeah and i got you more buck over here ready to split sure. guys if you're local let me add this in there saturday the 11th the farm shop is opening back up for our it's going to be winter now right is yeah. it winter yet well not a Officially, I don't think it's cold. Yeah, it's just cold. It's getting cold. It's fall. Yeah. We're going to open up for probably the month. Probably the month of November. November. Um, Three then, weekends. Yeah, and then I'll do by appointment um, beyond that. But, you know, December is generally busy for a lot of people. Christmas. Yeah, so. So, yeah, we'll be open. All kinds of chicken cuts and all kinds of neat stuff, y'all. Some vegetables. We'll some candles lettuce and collards and um, maybe some turnips turnips radishes kale so green and it's chicken that time plenty of, of chicken yeah guys and also if you hadn't bought any beard balm yet get you some make a great stocking stuffer for anybody that you know that has a beard they're gonna like it especially if they want to smell like a dude like a man y'all have a good day a great week and lord willing in the creek don't rise too high We'll see you on the next one.